Hello, this is Ipo Sword, and today we're going to be talking about this, the 1889 German Infantry Officer's Sword. This will be the first in a series of videos covering swords from the German Empire from around 1889 and 1890. We're going to start at the obvious starting point with the infantry, being one of the largest segments of the army at the time. Stay tuned for the next four videos. The 1889 Infantry Officer's Sword is what is known as a Degen in German, and that describes a sabre-hilted sword with a straight single-edged blade. This is a piquet weight or levy weight example and is slightly smaller than the full-size field variant, so I won't be able to talk too much about its combat effectiveness, but I would remind you that by the end of the 19th century, infantry officers would rarely have to use their sword in combat. This example is still fairly stiff for its size, and features a fairly thick blade, considering its smaller size. It has a double fullered nickel coated blade with elaborate etchings and even a dedicated name panel. The hilt is made of gilt bronze and features a folding guard, and it was made by Clemens and Young in Solingen, as can be seen by their mark here. This is not a Prussian sword, as you will often see it described, but rather a German sword. After the Franco-Prussian War in 1870, Kaiser Wilhelm I unified Germany into a single country under the name Germany. This, being from 1889, is long after that, and bears the mark of Kaiser Wilhelm II. Thus, it is truly a very German sword. The hilt is made out of the newly invented Bakelite, a plastic made from nitrocellulose. And the handle has the eagle of Kaiser Wilhelm II. However, many of these, or rather some of these, will have Württemberg or Saxony symbols instead of the emblem of Kaiser Wilhelm, as they are for officers from those regions. The frost edge blade is very nicely etched and says Feldwebel met. Feldwebel was the highest non-commissioned officer rank that a non-commissioned officer could get to and was equivalent to the British Regimental Sergeant Major or Company Sergeant Major. The two were consolidated in the German Army and thus there is no differentiating word between the two. That probably explains why this is such a high grade of sword. The double fullered blade is fairly light and offers very nice handling characteristics. You can still see the remains of the gilding on the inside of this handle. Many of these had steel hilts, however this one is bronze. The steel hilted ones will often have a solid non-folding guard. The reason for folding guards on these swords was simply to make them easier to store, as they're considerably thinner folded as opposed to unfolded. In order to date this sword, we actually have to look at its scabbard rather than the sword itself. In 1892, the scabbards for the 1889 moved from being two ring to one ring, as is on this example. And you'll notice that it has a rather thick, shiny black lacquer to it. This tells me it was probably from before 1908, when all of the scabbards of the 1889 had to be painted black with a rather thin bl black paint. The Japaning option, as this lacquer is referred to, was available before then. Otherwise you would have a plain steel or nickel steel scabbard. As you can tell, this has held up remarkably well, without even a hint of corrosion, just my fingerprints on it. And I'd attribute the incredible state of this blade to the high protection that this scabbard offers. The Japan lacquer is thus a very effective preservative paint. However, it was expensive both to buy and apply at the time, thus why it was a custom option. The 1889, being a Degen, is single-edged and is essentially a thrusting sword. Even the full-size variants lack a lot of cutting authority, like earlier back swords that you'd see, for example, the British and Scottish using. However, this is 1889, 
And by 1889, no one is expecting an officer to charge headlong into battle using only his sword. Repeating firearms using modern powders were just around the corner. In fact, by 1898, the Germans were using their new Gewehr 98. The 1898 often had a leather finger loop on the inside of the guard, and that is the only indication of damage on this one. If you can see there, the leather has been severed, as it will likely become brittle over time, as the leather has a tendency to do. One of the benefits of this is that the hilt has absolutely no rotation in it that you'd often see on other swords, for example, British and French. Because the leather pad goes under this brass ferrule, or rather bronze ferrule, as it's more likely to be, the compression applied was quite high, and everything has stayed nice and tight. If anyone knows of a database in which I can search for officers from that time period, between around 1892 and 1908, I'd very much like to hear of it, because this is obviously a very high grade of sword for a fairly high-ranking non-commissioned officer. However, I cannot find any records from the time, as would be expected considering many would have been destroyed during World War I and II. You'll note that this does have some small indentations here on the guard. Those were to better hold a sword knot. This could either have a leather or a gold braid dress knot or porter pair. In summary, the 1889 is a single-edged, thrusting-oriented sword with a sabre hilt. This example has a lot of custom modifications to it. However, not all of them had these. You could also have shagreen hilts instead of bakelite, for example. Many of the bronze-hilted ones had folding guards. Many of the steel-hilted ones had solid guards, and the blades are often nickel-coated and sometimes etched. This has been Ipo Swords, and this was part one of a video series on German swords. Thank you for watching. Stay sharp.